So I'm going to try to finish this example that we were working on in class today. And I'm thinking that um, we uh, should just do parts D and E right here. And then we'll do another video for the problem at the bottom of page 10. So where it says for part D, it says compute the Z score for an incoming freshman with a GPA of 2.4. So again, we're being asked to find a z-score, which we know is x minus x-bar all over s, but this time they're telling us that x is equal to 2.4. So what we want to do is plug that into our z-score formula. So what we have would be x, start there, 2.4 minus, and then go back up to the top where we had our mean, which was 2.85 and then divide that answer by 0.15. And if we do that math, we get negative 0.45 over 0.15, or if you do it all in your calculator at once, we get negative three. So this means that a student who has a GPA of 2.4, which is over up here on my z-scores axis, right, or on my data axis, you guys can see the giant blue spot I'm trying to make. There's an associated identical spot right below at negative three on the z-axis because that's our z-score. Now part E is actually asking us to walk backwards. So let's see what part E is telling us to do. This time we are actually um, asked what GPA does someone have if they have a z-score of 1.75? So we know that z is 1.75 and that x it bar is 2.85 and s is 0 0.15. But we have no idea what x is. So I have an equation that's gonna help us out here. If we are missing x, then we can use this equation that I have. We actually take the mean and then we add z times the number of standard deviations. So for example, let's try it with our data. Let me switch colors. Our z score that they gave us was 1.75. Our x bar is 2.85 and s is 0.15. So we would have x equals 2.85 plus, and then we take our z-score 1.75 and multiply it by the s value of 0.15. And if you do that all at once in your calculator, then you will see that this student has a GPA of 3.1125. So this would be the GPA 3.1125 is the GPA for the student who has a z-score of 1.75. And up in part D, we had actually found the z-score for someone who has a GPA of 2.4. So we can be asked to find the z-score or asked to work backwards and find the actual missing x value. Both are fair game. Catch me in the next video.